cool trick. Um, someone showed me. I'm gonna climb with my Petzl foot ascender here on my right foot, and I got this super cool new Stein knee ascender. I do have my cool Arb Pro boots. This is gonna click in here onto the top of my Arb Pro boot. Then here's the ascender here. Most people like to use this to a chest harness, but what I'm gonna try today. Most people say I don't like that chest harness. It just kind of binds me, especially in the cold days like today. Um, i got so many clothes on. So I'm going to use my flip line to hold up my knee ascender. So I kind of like this height. I take my flip line. I go up over my shoulder this way. And then I click it in. And then it's really nice and adjustable. So the nice thing about that is I could just pull it as tight as I want or as loose as I want. So it's kind of a cool trick to use your flip line to hold up the knee ascender and adjust the height of that knee ascender. So um, I'm off an of oak off a house today and go to the top of the tree. I'll show you that. I'll show you how I climb with this. But I, I like this flip line idea with a really highly adjustable length for that knee ascender and not having to wear a chest harness. All right, let's go get some tree Okay, it's so a double rope technique up over the crotch at the top of the tree. Here's my double rope technique, my foot ascender in here, carabiner to lock it, chainsaws holding my rope down, and then here's my knee ascender. My knee ascender is clipped above my foot ascender. I step up with my right foot on my foot ascender, and then step up on my left foot. The knee ascender, that bungee cord, should pull it up, and I step up on the left. I've heard some people call this rope walking. It's a really nice way to climb up a rope, really easy. All uh, especially when you're my age, all that work being done with your legs instead of your arms. Um, I want to adjust the knee ascender here a little bit, so I tightened up my flip line. I'm going a little bit slow here, mostly because there's, I'm not holding down my rope very well. And my rope's not free dangling from the tree, it's kind of close to the trunk. So, um, a little bit of trouble there. But it's, it's a really nice technique, and a good way to get up to the top of the tree. Here I'm at the top of the tree just cleaning up some small limbs and that's a crotch I'm going to tie into with the double rope technique and then lower down from that and start taking the limbs off the house side of the tree. So this is Northern California, um, wildland, fire, very serious concern for all homeowners. So the goal is really to keep the forest side away from the home. So I'm just kind of taking all the limbs off of the tree on the house side to separate, you know, the home and the forest. Here, this is kind of a long limb dangling over some ornamentals and right by the rail. Rather than rope it down, I'm just going to cut it slow and let it peel so it'll fold and break down. And then I'll just kind of shorten it up by a few feet. Uh, only problem with this is if it breaks off and the butt flies to the house. But it, it actually cut pretty well there. I'll just lean down, I don't know, five, five feet, and then separate it, uh, and then the butt, that was nice that the butt fell back towards the tree, and I'll just clean up my stub there. Uh, I'm still clipped with the flip line and my climbing line, and here I actually swapped out my still 200T for my uh, still 361 for cutting out these blocks. Uh, flip line around the tree and my climbing line up above. Big, wicked, ugly stub at the base. That was a homeowner's, not mine. I did clean it up. That's what got me the job in the first place was got, got in a little over his head. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video.